Hi, my name is Grant Dawson. I'm an undergraduate in the Newman Lee Lab, mentored by Lindsay Martin Krikorian, and today I'm asking the question, are the turtles stressed too? Just like you and I, turtles are able to experience stress, not by impending deadlines, but by parasite loads, predator-prey interactions, and other stressors in the wild. When stressed, turtles will release glucocorticoids, a class of bloodstream molecules that have an effect throughout the entire body, specifically to promote the mobilization of sugars to use to respond to the stress and mediate physiological trade-offs. They also shift their immune system resources, changing the relative amount of heterophils and lymphocytes, two types of white blood cells, in their circulatory system. By increasing the relative amount of heterophils, turtles are able to bolster their frontline immune defenses to fight off the possible source of their stress. In reptiles, we find that these responses to acute or intermediate stress are very individualistic, dependent on how much chronic or continual stress the organism is usually under. A fairly unstressed individual can mount a robust stress response, while a chronically stressed turtle will generate relatively weak stress responses due to energy limitations. This is known as allostasis, or adjusting to a new normal. In this study, I wanted to determine if a population of turtles is experiencing chronic stress due to the water quality of their habitat, such as temperature, pH, conductivity, and dissolved oxygen. I measured the blood glucose level of turtles as a proxy for the amount of glucocorticoids released. Blood was taken and analyzed to establish a heterophil lymphocyte ratio. This is both indicative of chronic stress in wild animals as well as shifting immune resources. Together, these metrics will indicate how robustly the turtle is responding to the stress of being caught by researchers, which we can use to infer how much chronic stress the turtle is experiencing. Over two weekends, I sampled turtles with the Newman Lee Lab from three locations at a runoff site of the Langwill River near Cherry Valley, Arkansas. Twelve turtles were caught using a hoop net and their blood was taken from the caudal vein three times, zero, 30, and 60 minutes after capture. The blood was tested with a glucometer and smeared onto slides at each of these intervals. The slides were fixed in methanol, stained, and analyzed under a microscope for heterophil and lymphocyte frequencies per 50 white blood cells. Water temperature, pH, conductivity, and dissolved oxygen were measured after each capture using a handheld calibrated device. The results show no correlation between overall change in blood glucose level and the water quality. However, there were positive correlations between blood glucose level and pH and temperature. Heterophil lymphocyte ratios and blood glucose levels both generally increased over time. Figure 3 shows a surprisingly tight correlation between the pH of the water and the baseline blood glucose levels. This is a novel discovery that isn't easily found in the literature, though we hypothesize that it could be due to physiological or ecological factors. Turtles have extremely flexible blood pH levels, which allows them to increase or decrease metabolic production. The level of pH in the water may help to increase metabolic rate. The pH could also be a reflection of limnological factors such as primary productivity or eutrophication. In figure four, the positive correlation between baseline blood glucose and temperature is due to the ectothermic nature of reptiles. This means that they cannot create body heat, so they must utilize outside sources, which dictates bodily functions like movement and metabolism. As the ambient temperature increases, the turtle's metabolism increases, causing the amount of glucose in the blood to increase as well. Figure five shows that heterophil lymphocyte ratios increased over time after capture by an average of five heterophils per lymphocyte. Each line on this figure represents an individual turtle, illustrating that as the turtles experienced stress by being caught by researchers, they began increasing their populations of heterophils. This figure shows that some individuals have a smaller increase in ratio over time than others. These turtles with a smaller change in ratio are likely chronically stressed. Therefore, they have less energy to devote to shifting their heterophil lymphocyte ratios. The individuals with a much greater increase likely have enough energy to do so because they're relatively unstressed. With a variation of increases in ratio, we can assume that this sample of turtles is variably stressed. Figure 6 shows all blood glucose levels increased over time by an average of 42 mg per deciliter. The uptick in glucose is caused by a host of physiological factors such as the release of glucocorticoids. According to Newman Lee et al. 2019, glucocorticoids aren't as connected to blood glucose levels as once thought. However, the combined efforts of glucocorticoids and other compounds, such as norepinephrine, provide a considerable link between stress and blood glucose levels. Therefore, we can conclude that all these individuals experienced acute stress upon capture. This turtle likely has an artificially high blood glucose level due to having a recent meal. Recent meals could also affect the relationship between blood glucose and temperature, which we need to control for a variable in future experiments. In summary, with these data, we can conclude that the turtles are, in fact, stressed too. However, this probably isn't from the water quality metrics we tested, and further studies are necessary to consider other variables, such as climate change and anthropogenic influence.
Thank you to Mason Fisher and the Newman Lee Lab for their help with data collection. Thank you to Jen Terry for allowing me to conduct this study parallel to her thesis, and thank you to ABI for funding this project.